Okay, it's fun project time. Well, fun and useful. So, I don't remember what brand this metal detector was. It actually worked pretty good for coin finding and stuff. I have an expensive, you know, much better one, but this could be all right. So two people could go out and both of us could have uh, detectors and goof off. And anyhow, we kind of never really use it anymore. And I was doing uh, something out of wood and I needed, I was reusing uh, two by fours from a deck that I had sort of destroyed, took it apart. There's one of the pieces. The wood's perfectly solid, it just looks ugly on the outside. Well, anyway, you need to check these things for nails and screws. So, I made this thing. I just made it so you clamp it on a table like that and just wave your boards in front of it. And it would detect very small metal objects. I mean, a little tiny bitsy screw, like, you know, a broken off piece of screw type thing. Worked great. And I was using, because I'm cheap and refused to buy batteries, these nickel metal hydride rechargeable 9 volts that I have had for, I bet, a decade. And they work pretty good. I actually got them for a wireless guitar pickup thing. And they work for that forever. But anyways, this thing's now squealing about low battery every time I put them in there. So I decided it's time to revisit this. Now, before I popped this open and made these... Uh, nine volt pockets. I, I don't know what they are. They were, I think, from DigiKey. I don't have a tripod, so I'm gonna struggle to show you without breaking my fingernail off. But okay, they popped out like that. They did like that. You would slide a nine volt in there. Ba boop, ba boop. Everything still fits on the pole. That was a detector head, and they could use rechargeable batteries that way and switch them out easily. Anyways. I'm tired of fooling with batteries, or at least those batteries. So if I ever want to use it in the field, can this be made to run on lithium batteries? And B, can I make it run on, you know, a, a wall plug for in the shop? So if and when I want to test wood for nails, all I gotta do is walk over and plug in the adapter, and it's ready to go, no batteries involved. So one or the other. I gotta crack this thing open. I don't know if it uses nine volts and nine volts to make 18 volts, and that's what the board runs on or if it's two 9-volt batteries that are parallel. I don't know. We're going to have to crack it open and attempt to look at the battery connections and see if we can discern what the board runs on and make that happening. So let's see what happens. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, like I said, this thing actually worked pretty good. You could go probably eight or nine inches in depth of it, which was shocking. Now, I'm sure the discrimination and features weren't the best, but you know, when I was fooling around with metal detecting a little, I had a bag of uh, test objects, coins, a gold wedding ring I found on a beach type thing and stuff like that. And anyways, uh, you just would test it, bench test it stick the coil out in the open air or one touch anything, turn this thing on and fool the settings. And I think what I figured out was the sensitivity was almost all the way up and the other bar, there's only two in this simple thing, was almost all the way the other direction. And it worked. It would tune out trash or make a different sound for bottle tops and, and uh, beer tops and stuff like that versus coins pretty darn well. For an El Cheapo, it really did all right. But anywho, it's time for an, it to have a new life. So let's see what we can figure out here. Well, how does that speaker, what did they do, just melt it in? No. Okay, they glued the speaker in. So I can't just pop it out to manipulate this board. What else we got here? We got a display that there would be no point in me disconnecting. Would there? Um, maybe. Let's take that off of there. Take the 
this ribbon cable out if we can carefully get it out. Disconnect this fella back here. Come on out of there. That's <laughs> up. the board up off it. I must have done it before even though I don't remember it because I had to get access underneath here to put those nine volt thingamathangies back in there. Right? Come on out of there. the good old days when they had the types of ICs and maybe they still use them I don't know I am nowhere near uh, knowledgeable on electronics well, old man eyes failed but uh, remember when they used to have the chips that if you touched them they'd erase their memory and were ruined god I hated that having to be so careful oh that's what I thought yeah perfect oh look some crud got in there huh it's not good. I better give that a scrubbing with the old alcohol pad. Can you see it? Ew, corrosion. What was that, bugs? Hmm. I was pretty religiously careful with this thing, but obviously some corrosion got in there. Maybe not. Maybe that's leftover flux from when they made the board. I really don't know. But I'm gonna scrub it with alcohol nonetheless. Anywho, let's focus on what we got here to do. So there's one 9 volt in, and this is the second one, right? So what happens on the other side of the board where they come in? Uh, all it says is battery 1 and battery 2. That's not helpful. going to have to get a magnifying glass I reckon to see if I can follow the traces on the board and see or I just need to get a oh no I don't I just use a meter dummy hold on check and see if the positives are tied together mm. come on cooperate can you see anything so <clears throat> all right which two did I say I think it's the furthest ones over here yeah those two so Positives are on the, t well I can test it from over here. Maybe. Are you gonna shoot out from under my probes? Probably. Well, it doesn't appear that I am getting Continuity from those two. What about the negatives? Hmm. The ground isn't tied together either, or there's a coating on this board, and I'm simply not probing hard enough to find out. All right, fiddle fiddle. Let me switch around. Um, let me clean this off with some alcohol. All right. Give it some swab and some alcohol. And it looks a lot better. Okay. Over here, same treatment. More alcohol. This is denatured alcohol. You can't use rubbing alcohol, you gotta use something that's, you know. Okay. Mm. Alright. Now 
what do we have? Let's go through over there. I am not going to be able probably to, tr to follow that with me eyeballs. Dang it. Hold on. Well, that's terrible. Alright, let me see if I can figure something out around right here. Well, I guess we're going to test how good this phone can zoom in together. And doesn't it look like a trace between the positive of the one and the negative on the other, which would seem like these are running series? Right. There. Isn't that a trace? Ooh, 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 ooh. Ah, my eyes are not cooperating. I'll have to stick this under a better magnifying source, but I don't have one I can share with you guys, so let me stare at this longer. Nothing. Doesn't that look like a trace, though? Mm. Okay. Well, at least what I can determine is that you can't see squat from this side of the board, so it's got to be on the other where you figure this out. Yep, it is series, so it's 18 volt. Ah, it's good to be a hoarder. Look what I found in my stash. Some old laptop, whatnot. 19 volt, three amp. Way more amperage than needed, but 19 volt DC output. So, what is that test to? I'm not gonna be able to hold these probably, but just have to believe me. Maybe I can. Boop, boop, 19.7. All right, Dan, so I'm gonna, I guess, alligator clip well, I'll have to cut the wires that go to the, you know, batteries up here. Unless I can open those hatches up and alligator clip on to uh, the actual terminals. I'll try to do that. Anywho, hook this all back up, put the ribbon cable in, put the display on, and then uh, have this on a power strip, separate one that I can flip on and off. Or just physically plug it in and then see if the metal detector comes on. See how it works. And uh, hopefully not blow up the board. <laughs> okay, I guess I forgot I screwed these things in with little tiny screw down there. I think it's only one. Both of them. Anyway, I can't one-handed it, I don't think. But oh, this probably ought to come out of here now. Ugh. Screws are out. Save those. Now, does this whole thing press out now? Or did I somehow? Oh, I did. I somehow managed to jam in two screws each one. Wow! Let me get those out. Okay, near as I can tell, everything's hooked. I traced those leads to, you know, on the board where the it says battery one, battery two. We already know they're in series. So the positive on the one side should be getting the 19 volts. The negative on the other side should be the negative from that source, which they are. I figured out which trace or which wire went to which terminal. Nothing's shorted out. Excuse me, all the board is plugged back in. So I guess, let me see if I can put you where you can see it. Can you see the display? No, it's too, it's too hard to get everything where you want it, so we're just going to listen for the sound and you'll just have to trust me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hook these up and hope for no spectacular explosions. Yeah, plugging it in. Nothing happened. Turn it on. 
didn't like that. Didn't like it. Why not? connected. Try it again. Uh, I should have made speaker sounds, but it didn't. Hmm, why would that be? The display out comes on correctly. It's weird. Yeah, just the speaker's not working. Everything else is working. Hmm. Weird. All right. Unplugging. Hmm. Hmm. 19.7 is too much, do you think? Uh, I'm gonna have to go figure this out. What does a regular alkaline 9 volt battery put out maximum? Maybe that is the problem. It can't handle the tiny bit extra. I don't know. Let me see. So, in the interest of sanity, I mark these so I know which lead coming from each side is the splice. I'm gonna cut the wire. I'm going to solder these on it. I'm going to drill a hole in the case over here where we know there's nothing behind it because it's underneath the board. Boop, and that's where the wires will come out, which will end up in this fella. And then you can attach your, you know, um, in our case, whatever it was, 18 volt supply. I want these wires twisted nice. So let's just give it one of these jobs, see what happens. Oh. There it is. Yes. We'll run that out the side. And then let's poke it in there and give it some strain relief. Come on now. Get on up in there. Go on get. Well, I don't think we need. Actually, well, kind of do that backwards. Hold on. Let's go this way. Whoop. Yeah, I, I used way too much wire, but that's all right. Let's give this the old strain relief job, like this here. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's it. Ah! Uh, 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 uh. That'll work. Back out here. Oh. Skadoop. All right. Let me get the solder in there and rigged up here. Oh my god. The old eyeballs don't want to see that tiny thing. <sighs> Soldering iron heating. I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's heating. Takes it about 15 seconds, maybe. 30. Oh, yeah. All right. Ugh. Come on, you old eyeballs. That is the 
biggest ball of unnecessary solder of all time. Did I get it though? Yeah, all right, Dan. You know, done is done, and that is done. Give it the old shrinky pinky. Boop, boop. Next, hold on. Buck buck number two. You know, I've joked, getting older ain't that old, but this is harder to see. Diggity. That went better than usual. Trust me on that one. Let me uh, take it back to the other workbench and reassemble. All right, we're gonna see if we doof this thing up. So all I did was splice this in, really, that's all. So, these should still be functional. Now, it was giving me a low battery, you know, upset earlier from these nickel metal hydride rechargeable cells, so. That one never did go in all the way. These are slightly different size than regular alkaline batteries so they don't like this they never did care for this enclosure too much but they would kind of work if you shoved hard enough anyway moment of truth good and the speaker worked it says low battery but okay we're no worse for wear there and the speaker works we've got the leads in here now I'm gonna turn this off, but I bet you that if I measure these little fellas, this should, if I wired it right, say 18 volts. Yeah. Let's see this thing. We'll find out. Mm. Alright, it's on a 20 volt DC. Uh, scale. Turn it on. And come on now. What do we get? 13 point. Well, 13 volts. So that's why it's claiming it's weak. I guess 9 volts operated. Uh, I think it said down to 7.2 volts. And the internet says. Uh, 500 milliamps is what they can put out for about an hour so this power supply should be perfectly good let me get things put back together 
So I think... Yeah, even if you put the batteries in there, leave if you can't screw anything up if I leave the batteries in and plug it in because it's the same connections. It's still 18 volts. I don't know. I'm not gonna try though. I'm gonna get. Uh, where did it go? That fella screwed on to the leads. Take the batteries out. Hook it up to the power supply and see if everything works. All right, hold on. Okay. Everything's wired up. There's my power supply. I know I did this tip positive because that's what the outside of the case says. And I know the orange was positive wire and the inside that we soldered. So plugging in this old computer power supply. Get it up here where it won't collapse on me. Batteries are out. It's plugged in. It doesn't like that on the speaker though weird but the metal detector functions hmm I don't understand unless one thing I think now hmm only thing I can think of is I wonder if the speaker operates on 9 volt part of the circuit that it does pull nine volts from one battery to feed the speaker. And since it's not getting it, it's unhappy. I don't know, but we need that speaker, which is now paying in my butt. Um, well, now I gotta experiment and see if I can plug something in the earphone hole. <sighs> Hold on. I win. That'll work. Now let's see how small of a screw it can detect. Hold on. Okay, here's an example. Very small little picture hanging nail, right? I'm about, oh, I don't know. Four or five inches away from it. So the idea is you mount that to the workbench, stick it out there past the side, and just walk a piece of wood by it. And uh, it'll get it. That'll work. That's running on an old IBM Wachahootis. I haven't messed up its field operations because I can use the 9 volt batteries. Those are weak, but I'm gonna get online right now and order some replacement uh, 9 volt rechargeable batteries. I mean, like I said, I've had those at least 10 years. I think more than that. And they, I keep them on a charger, but they have actually been fantastic for little no-name rechargeable batteries. I don't remember where I got them. Maybe it was Harbor Freight. I don't know, I'll have to look online, but uh, hey, this thing works. It's gonna be a nice drag it out just when you need it. Metal detector for used wood stuff for the shop. Well, I better get at it. This whole thing spiraled out of control. I'm supposed to be making a computer screen, an old monitor, right? I wanted to add it to my exercise bike so I can watch shows, and I wanted to cast stuff from my phone using a Chromecast to the screen, and this all spiraled out of control, because then I needed a piece of wood to mount this thing to, and then I had an old piece of wood, and then I needed to test it for metal, and then here we are, so yeah. Bonus, check it out. If you ever had a piece of wood with a quarter lodged inside of it, well, you'd know it versus a nail. Fancy.